Elohim or Alahaya for angel. Why is there so many different names for God? Because God is just a title. Like God is not his name. Even when we say Yahweh, mm -hmm. like that's the name we ascribe. When you see Lord or when you see it in Hebrew, it's Yahweh. Even that's just a title. Mm -hmm. You can't really give him a name. So you might see God, Lord. And even the Lord, they'll put the Lord in all caps. So, you know, you talk about, or even we say the most high. So these are all titles that are given to the ultimate power or almighty power. So what is Elohim? Elohim also is a, is, the, is a modern Hebrew word. The book of Sirach, chapter 17, verse 10. And the elect shall praise his holy name. All right, I want to give all praises honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rahawadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Holy Tongue. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the King and Savior of Israel. And Rahawadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the Comforter. Double on us the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for leading by example in these last days and Shalom to the hopeful elect. Are you Aki and making your bodies a living sacrifice? Now, through the Spirit, the name of this lesson is Yahweh is not a title. And it's in response to this individual who calls himself Captain Tazariak of the ISUPK. And it's just another example of evil men waxing worse and worse. His latest debacle is now saying that the name of the Lord is not actually a name, but a title. And this is obviously blasphemy. And it's, it's crazy to watch someone who used to have some semblance of understanding of the scriptures just completely devolve into uh, he's a running joke in israel now man he's been confounded by the conscious community and now the lord has taken his name away from him as a it's scary and it's crazy but hey these things have to happen all of you jakes that are fanboys of this truth you you watch this camp you watch a little bit of that camp i learned a little bit from this and you know, you're not called to be a fanboy. You're not supposed to follow someone because you like the way they teach or you like their garment or you like the way their videos are edited or you like a particular whatever. This is not a, about personalities or, you know, this is all about Yahweh Shai and glorifying Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh, which is the name, the name of the Father, Bahashem in the name Yahweh Shai. He is the deliverer. He's the savior. We're not supposed to worship men in the sense that you see someone clearly going off, but because you like the way they teach, or perhaps they were the person that called you into the truth. So now you're just going to discard all of the nonsense coming out of their mouth. We're supposed to defend the gospel and reprove and rebuke wickedness. And there's nothing more wicked than you denouncing the name of the Lord. It tells you in the third commandment. Matter of fact, let me get this real quick. Because you got Jake all about the law, the law. You got to keep the law, keep the law. Israel, keep the law. Well, let's read one of the laws. All right. This is the book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh thy power in vain. For Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Now, the word vain means emptiness. It means nothingness. When you say the name Yahweh is not a name but a title, you're taking his name in vain. This is not going into the word goddamn. All right. You have these pagans that call themselves Christians. They'll say, well, you're not supposed to say goddamn. That's taking the Lord's name in vain. First of all, the Lord's name is not God. So saying goddamn is not taking the Lord's name in vain. When you say the name Yahweh, is worthless when you say it's empty when you say that's not his name when you say you can call the lord whatever you want that's taking the lord's name in vain and that's really the doctrine of a lot of these 501c3 israelite camps you have the iuic they teach that you can call the lord whatever name you want and now you have isupk saying that the lord's name is not actually a name but a title this is complete this is total blasphemy. This is going completely off from the scriptures. And it shows you that we're at the end because this is not something that he would have said five, six years ago. This is clearly a man waxing worse and worse and worse. And we're just going to go into some scriptures and show you not only is Yahweh the name of the father, but his name is the only reason that he's saving us. He put his name on us and he swore by his name that he would give us the kingdom of heaven. That's the only reason that we're receiving mercy. That's the only reason that we're receiving the kingdom of heaven. That's the only reason that we're receiving salvation. We haven't done anything to deserve that. We're receiving mercy and salvation because of his name, Yahweh. Let me get that real quick. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, 
And I'm going to go straight to the point. Verse 22. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither you went. Right. The only reason we're being saved is because of the name of the Lord. It's not of our works. It's not of anything that we've done to personally deserve the kingdom of heaven. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 48, verse nine, for my name's sake, will I defer mine anger? And for my praise, will I refrain for thee that I cut thee not off, right? It's for the Lord's name's sake that he's deferring his anger from us and for his praise. This is all about the praise of the name Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. The reason he gave us his name back is so we, that we could praise him in the land of our captivity. As a matter of fact, let me get that next. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 2, uh, verse 32. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. Let me read that again, because this is this is critical, because as I mentioned, IUIC earlier, one of the falsehoods that they teach is that we won't know the name of the Lord until we get into the kingdom of heaven. They they use a scripture in Revelation that says, well, look, we're going to get a new name in the kingdom. That's not talking about that. All right. The name is being refreshed. The scriptures say we're going to have the name of the Lord in our captivity so that we can praise him. Let me read that again. This is Baruch chapter two, verse thirty two. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. Now, how can you praise the Lord and think upon his name in the land of your captivity if we're not going to get the name until we're in the kingdom? This is plain. This is a straight cut. Here's another one. Still in the book of Baruch. This is chapter three, verse seven. And for this cause, thou hast put thy fear in our hearts to the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity to the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee. And that goes into Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, which we're currently living. So the Lord gave us his promises. He gave us the prophecies. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us the understanding of the scriptures. And he wants his glory for that. What God did that? What God promised to scatter his chosen people across the four winds and put them under curses and then call them to mind in the land of their captivities? Who did that? Was that Jesus Christ? Was that Allah? Was that Buddha? Was that any other deity? No, that was Yahweh in the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. So you understanding the scriptures, you understanding your heritage, that you're an Israelite. You're not a so-called black man. You're not a so-called Latino. You're not a so-called Jamaican. You're not a so-called Dominican. When you come into that understanding, you have to praise the deity. You have to praise the entity that gave you your identity back, that gave you understanding, that gave you hope. Because we're at the very end of Babylon the Great. And as it tells you in Isaiah 33 and 6, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. So aren't you supposed to praise a deity that gives you that type of understanding, that type of anchor to your soul, that type of power that's going to give you that boldness and confidence to stand stiffly when all hell breaks loose? You don't want to praise the name Yahweh. You don't want to praise his son, Yahweh Shai. You want to call on the Most High and Christ bless? Are you out of your goddamn mind? This is Psalms 18 and 49. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Yahweh, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Again, we're going to have the name of the Lord in our captivity and praise him among the heathen. Look, we're stunting on these people, man. We're telling them boldly to their face. All of your gods are idols. Every single god of the heathen is an idol. We worship the only true and living power, and his name is Yahweh. That's his name. It's not a title. What is wrong with Tazariag? I mean, he's completely lost any bit of oil that he had. He went from confounding polite in a debate so hard that polite was just running around the room parading his wife. He completely destroyed polite in front of the whole unconscious community. Fast forward six, seven years later, the Lord has taken his name from him, man. He's now getting confounded by Sanetta. How do you get confounded by a black ass Dominican trying to be an African Freemason? This is. It, you falling completely off, to, but this isn't even to Tazariac. This is for anybody that's in that state of mind that's trying to follow men instead of following Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai and the true church. This is Isaiah chapter 12, verse 4. And in that day shall ye say, Praise Yahweh, call upon his name, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Now, how do you exalt somebody's name if they don't have a name? All they have is a title. How can you like this is 
this isn't even complicated, man. How do we get here? How do we get to May 22nd, 2021? Jake is talking about the name of the Lord is really a title. That is a, it's something every day with you Jakes, man. Just stick to the scriptures. The scriptures do not say that the name Yahweh is a title. That's nowhere in the Bible. Why would you say that? But this is getting back to my main point, which is that the Lord's name is the real reason that we're going to be saved. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 106, and I'm going to start at verse 6. We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our fathers understood not thy works in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, nevertheless, he saved them for his namesake that he might make his mighty power to be known. So again, you could see the actions of the Israelites are completely contemptuous, meaning they're worthy of being condemned. You're not supposed to glory in the fact that you're an Israelite for the sake of being an Israelite. Yes, we are happy to have our heritage back, but you're not supposed to be in that spirit of I'm an Israelite, so I'm saved. No, we haven't done anything to be worthy of salvation. The Heavenly Father has a, a dossier on every single one of us. Basically, he has a list of our sins going all the way back to the garden. He has every right to completely destroy his creation, but for his name's sake, because he put his name on us, because he promised Abraham that he would save us, that's why we're going to be delivered. That's the only reason. So any Israelite in the spirit of downplaying the Lord's name, taking the Lord's name in vain, saying the Lord's name doesn't matter, they're in a completely off spirit. This is 1 John chapter 2, verse 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Let me read that again. First John 2, verse 12. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Just think about that, man. Your sins, every sin you've committed in your life, all the adultery, the idolatry, you doing wickedness, all of the foolishness that you've done without knowing that you're an Israelite. And the father said, what? Your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake because of his name. And you, you don't glory in that? You don't praise that name? That, that is a, you, you Jake's are disgusting, man. You're disgusting people. And, you know, it, again, it's through his mercies that we're going to be saved. It, you could clearly see we deserve to be wiped off the face of the earth, especially when you look at two thirds and these false prophets that they love to glorify so much. This is uh, back in the book of Psalms, chapter 45, verse 17. I will make thy name thy name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. Right. When you go into Exodus, the third chapter and the 15th verse, the heavenly father told Moses specifically, this is my name forever. This is my memorial unto all generations. How do you read Exodus, the third chapter and come away with the conclusion that Yahweh is not his name? He clearly said, look, I got to read it. I got to read it. This is the book of Exodus chapter three. And I'm going to start at 13. And Moses said unto the Most High, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The power of your fathers have sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? Question mark. What shall I say unto them? Question mark. So Moses is asking, What is your name? He didn't ask the Most High, What is your title? He asked him specifically, what is your name and what name should I give the children of Israel to call on you? Verse 14, and the Most High said unto Moses, I am that I am, which he's basically saying, look, I, I am that I am. It's basically like I'm me. So you have Israelite groups like GOCC, for example. They'll read that and just stop right there. They say the Most High's name is Ahiah. They say Ahiah Ashar Ahiah. Ahiah Ashar Ahiah is how you say I am that I am in the ancient Hebrew. But you have to keep reading. It says, and he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. And the Most High said, moreover, moreover unto Moses, meaning in addition to, don't stop right there. It clearly says moreover, because the Most High was speaking in the first person. You can't tell the nation of Israel that I am have sent you literally because Moses is not the Most High. So he's not going to say I am. He's not speaking of himself. He's speaking of the Most High to the children of Israel. So it says this, and the Most High said moreover unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh. Yahweh, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob have sent me unto you. Now it says Lord here in all caps. That's Yahweh. The Most High is telling Moses to give the name Yahweh to the children of Israel. This is plain, man. 
It says, and this is my memorial unto all generations. This is my memorial unto all generations. That's plain, man. How do you get around that? When you go into scriptures, you see Yahweh thousands of times. It's something like 6,000 times, if I remember correctly. But the point is, that's the name of the Most High. That's the name that Adam called on, the name that Seth called on, the name that Noah called on, the name that Shem called on, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, King David, King Solomon, Yahweh Shai. All of our forefathers called on the name Yahweh. But now all of a sudden, it's just a title. He doesn't have a name. That's completely off, man. You have to praise the name Yahweh. Yah meaning he, Hawa meaning to be, to exist, is. The Most High's name exists outside of time. You can't just translate it to English with a future tense, past tense, present tense. He always is, he always was, and he always will be. That's why you have to praise the name Yahweh specifically. And anyone telling you otherwise is going completely off. So let me end with this. This is not going to be long. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 30. Verse four, who have ascended up into heaven or descended? Question mark. Who have gathered the wind in his fists? Question mark. Who have bound the waters in a garment? Question mark. Who have established all the ends of the earth? Question mark. What is his name? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell? Question mark. So, Apparently, Captain Tazariak can't tell, all right? The scriptures are asking, what is his name and what is his son's name? And you have this clown saying that the Lord's name is actually a title. So the Most High is taking his spirit from this guy. Now he's taking his name from him. And, you know, this camp specifically, they teach that John the Baptist is not in the truth. They teach that you can uh, sodomize your wife. You can sodomize an Israelite woman. They teach that the, the mark of the beast is 666 white men. They teach that the mark of the beast is having sex with a white woman. They teach that King Solomon had the mark of the beast. These people are going completely off. And if you're following these other camps, hey, you're going to be destroyed right along with them. So Abaratazadis was edifying to the elect because again, as we open with in Sirach the 17th chapter, the elect shall praise his holy name. That's not given to everybody. The Lord doesn't want everyone to call on him. So when you see stuff like this, just know the Lord's not dealing with this individual. So with that, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the name Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rahakwadash. Again, all praises, honor, and glory to the name Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rahakwadash. Double honest, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and shalom to the hopeful elect.